So Cinnamon, what is there in your life that is your secret indulgence that your viewers don't actually know about yet? My secret indulgence that my viewers don't actually know about yet. Yeah. That you would be willing to share with us today. Exclusive. I very much like going way off the roadmap. Um, my husband and I, when we travel, we like to get off the main roads. And I like to visit as many of the big balls of string and uh, as many dinosaur footprints as I can. Any sort of weird roadside attractions. <laughs> any like really deep giant teepee touristy thing that I can do. Um, if we're going along and we could take the regular freeway, I'm going to route 66 it every time, like anything weird. And, and the stranger it is, like if it's a handwritten sign, it's even better. Oh, brilliant. I shall have to remember that for when I invite you over to Scotland. Oh yes. We will find parts of Scotland you did not even know about and bed and breakfast is to stay in that may or may not be haunted. <laughs> you don't even know. Just like way I like to go way, 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 way off the road and map and turnpike and just how the weirder it can get, the better it is. Hello creative tartanites and welcome to episode two of Tea with Tania. Today it is my pleasure to introduce to you Cinnamon Cooney, the art Sherpa. She has a YouTube channel with over half a million subscribers where she teaches anyone how to paint using acrylics. And for those of you who don't know the art Sherpa, I will leave all her details of where to find her in the description below. So without further ado, I give you the art Sherpa. Uh, well, thank you very much for joining me today, Cinnamon, for our tea and chat. Now, I have got, I have got some lemon and ginger tea here. What are you drinking? Well, I'm American, so I have bought into the establishment of Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, I don't, I, is Starbucks everywhere? I don't know. They're everywhere here. Yeah. Do you have Starbucks? Uh, we have Starbucks. Um, we okay. have lots of different uh, coffee. Um, but places. you guys didn't buy into it. I think it's like an American, like we're just like, yes, whatever it costs for this. Co I think they put extra addictive stuff in here. This is a soy flat white. Gra uh, yeah, grande. Oh, that sounds very healthy. Is it healthy? I, it can't be. <laughs> it's so tasty. It can't be. <laughs> Too tasty. So obviously cinnamon, um, I've known you for quite some time and I've been watching a lot of your videos uh, and um, essentially you started out um, teaching uh, beginners um, and you've kind of expanded a little bit. Um, yes. And that's the very condensed way of explaining um, what you actually do. So teaching art to people how to paint in acrylics. Yeah. Um, obviously that's, as I said, very condensed. How, how about you give us a little bit more in depth of what you consider yourself to be? I, I mean, it's honestly that it's, it, I teach people who either want to get back into painting, how to get back into it in the acrylic space, or I teach brand new people at any age level how to start painting. And then it's grown past that very entry level just because some people have done nearly every video and you know, they're, we have badges going on in the group and people are reporting 500 paintings that they've accomplished. So they're, they're on to more complicated projects. So as it went on, the projects have become more complicated and intensive, but there's still, I still consider everything, everything on my YouTube channel for beginners because I explain all the process. If it's yeah. a three hour video with complicated techniques, I still have to explain all the process and yeah. you're not really past that beginner stage until you can just sort of see a demo and break down the process in your own head and then that's okay, kind okay. of when you're in that intermediate kind of emergent space and, yeah. and then those time lapses and those shortened condensed videos are are super useful like for me they're fantastic yeah i love yeah. seeing them i'm like oh i know all your techniques thank you 
<laughs> yeah, I, I do. Uh, I, my, myself, I like to watch um, the, the time lapses from people and it's amazing what I can pick up from the time lapse. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas other people do like to, to have it slowed down. Um, we need and, to in the beginning. Yeah, and one of the things that I've kind of noticed, um, particularly with um, beginners and intermediates and, and very um, shy people, shall we say, um, for want of a better expression, they don't like to call themselves artists. Why no. do you think that is? You know, I think what it is, is that they have such reverence and love for what art is. And to them, there's this amazing stratosphere of incredible people and they can't imagine that they're part of that. Yeah. So it just, it just seems like I couldn't possibly be regular me part of this amazing, miraculous, fantastical, magical group of people. And I, I don't know enough yet. I'm not good enough yet. I'm not worthy enough yet to be part of that group. When in fact your first painting in, if you're creating stuff visually to express your inner dialogue, you are being an artist. Yeah. So if you were to sum up um, in one sentence, what is an artist? Because we, we've, we've probably all been there. We've had this discussion. I know I've looked up what it actually means in the dictionary and things to try and have conversations with people to kind of explain that, you know, they are allowed to call themselves artists. Mm -hmm. um, how would you sum up? What would you say is the key components of being an artist? Making art. So if you're making that. art, you're being an artist. Okay. Right? So let's... let's <laughs> Let, let's just nitpick a little bit. Let's unpick this okay. a little bit. What is art? Uh, visual expression. Okay. It's a, it, it, you know, we're talking the visual arts. It is a creative expression of your internal dialogue, mm -hmm. whatever that is. Yeah. Right? I mean, it can be a coloring book because you just feel colorful and you need to relax and color and you're getting out your work week in a coloring book, or it can be that you're following along with a tutorial and you're expressing your emotional experience through you know, copying that tutorial all the way to doing any originals that you want. It's really photography. There's, there's not a limit. It's, it's one of those things because we have as a community, right? One sentence. You can't really give us one sentence. <laughs> I do anything in one sentence. We cannot as a community acknowledge the fact that we've said a banana tape to a wall is in some intrinsic way art and then somehow disavow somebody um, at a booth at a local craft fair and say, well, they're not artists because there's some utilitarian component of their art or it's not complicated enough for our personal taste. You know, uh, we made the definition so inclusive that it's almost absurd to arbitrarily based on one's own personal preferences. And that's what it really is, isn't it? Like, I like this type of art and I aspire to this type of art and all those that aren't in my personal paradigm must not then therefore be artists. Like, I freehand all my drawings in before I paint. So you have to freehand all your drawings in before you paint to be a true artist. I love that you you, you always get people in that mid-emergent space. Yeah. Who like to say true artist. A true artist will or a true artist won't. And I'm just like, well. A real, that guy real that's the other word, isn't it? Yeah. Real. But that guy, you know, true. They do, they go like that, true. And then you're like, but that guy wrapped a building in fabric. Yeah. And you're cool with that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that's relatable to everybody everywhere. Yeah. It, no. it's, it's, it is tough, isn't it? Because it's so subjective. And I know fr from, um, fr from experience and, and from, um, you know, hanging out with you and, and um, all our other arty friends, um, that there, there is different views. And, and some people can be so hung up on a particular type of view um, mm -hmm. But it can be really difficult um, emotionally and, um, you know, to, to be able to then ex express themselves. And I know that you've got different, um, different groups and there's mm -hmm. even different types of expressions that happen within your different groups. Do you think maybe you could tell us a little bit about well, what are your different groups that you've got? Um, no, and what, what, who, who, who are they aimed at? <laughs> or is that going to take up the whole interview? <laughs> programs going. I have so many programs going now because I'll have a wild idea and I'll think like 50 people are going to show up and it's going to be some small thing. And then all of a sudden I have 4,000 people who are doing it yearly and I'm like, Oh, Oh, we're doing this. Okay. We're doing this every year now. <laughs> okay. This is established. 
Um, Because you've got acrylic April, that's now every year, isn't it? In fact, (gasps) is it not close to April now? I'm so excited about acrylic April. I'm really hoping it doubles and triples in size this year. This is when I'm I'm really growing. I uh, this will be the first one that has an accompanying book, so I'm really excited to see. Oh no, that, that is exciting. That layer of teaching goes like, can I take my video explanation and somehow make anything helpful or viable in a written explanation? Um, so that's very interesting and convincing somebody to understand that the book needs to be how I need it to be like that some of the pages need to be on 140 pound watercolor paper and some of them need to be on 90 and then yes some of them can be on the 20 pound it's like all this interesting stuff and talking about binding and explaining no it needs to lay flat it has to be so it's a really interesting whole nother dynamic process and I think it will let it be so the challenge is just the 30 days you know we paint every day in April a small painting very quickly yeah. for 30 days and with the goal of hopefully somewhere in the middle of it being so exhausted that we let go and start just creating and not evaluating and judging and second guessing because you're just too yeah. tired and too weak yeah to be for, on yourself and for right? anybody who's interested in the acrylic april words we're talking about it, i will link it down below oh. in the uh description um in fact i'll link i'll link everything that i possibly can in the description and the base program's free. Yeah. And as you know, uh, other YouTubers like like Inktober, if a, if some other creative wants to participate in it and have a kind of different conversation with their community, that's completely cool with me because I think that acrylic uh, really almost needs at some point a daily painting experience. Yeah. And and it's made for it because it's so fast. It's like dry and it's like you don't have to paint wet into wet on it. You can you just really work through it really quick and it, it lends yeah. itself to this idea that you can get in and get out and get in and get out and get in and get out and they're drying you're not having to figure out some drying space in your house i love oils i'm not disparaging the oil <laughs> they, they just have challenges yeah like acrylic has challenges you can't store these things facing each other because they become one painting yeah everything yeah. has challenges so you've also got the um, original, um, uh, the Art Sherpa group as well, and you've also got the 18 plus Art Sherpa group. Um, so tell us a little <laughs> bit about the differences between those. So my main group is for people that watch my show um, who are currently doing the tutorials and it's a place for them to share their first painting. It's a place for them to share their experiences with doing the artwork that I teach. It really is that one group is about my students. Yeah. Um, and we do have some allowances, like we have a Fine Art Friday where we let people share a painting or two that they're doing of their own, not a professional art. We don't allow professional artists in there. It isn't a marketing space. Mm. It isn't a place to build up an audience. Uh, it's really just a place for my students and a safe space and they can have conversations and share sales. And it's, it's very groovy and light and positive and we really, really curate it. Um, the 18 plus is for i had a lot of people that just they painted with me so long that they did exactly what they were supposed to do not need me anymore they just didn't need the tutorials anymore they needed to learn how to do their own original work and figure out what photos would reference out well and how to create collections and how to put thematic things together and that seemed to be from the end of the tutorial to that space seemed to be almost just too intense of a leap okay for a lot of people to, to just organically take it they were very nervous so i'm like all right let's make it safe we'll meet weekly i'll give you a word prompt i will hand curate a you know creative commons image that you can use without you know attribution that's safe it's not copyright theft and we will do this weekly and at the end i um award a certificate we we verify people do all 52 challenges they do mm-hmm. all 52 challenges. They get a, something that certifies that says they're Art Eagle. Okay. Bird. And we give, do some giveaways and stuff. But we also jury. It'll, for a lot of people, it's their first juried show. So um, okay. and myself, we go through and we go through everybody's album. And we do the, the you know first runner up, best in show, the whole bit, and explain why, and feature those artists okay. and those awards. So that's their first often um, element that they can put on hopefully what will be a very long artist resume later. Like, but it's, yeah. it, they can then say, I did a jury show. I 
it's just to give them that experience. They understand what that's like and how yeah. not to take, okay, kind of, because you know, you cannot take the Jared Show thing too seriously. You should take it seriously, but you can't take it too seriously. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely, because it's, it's one of the things that is, is difficult for people, isn't it? Because um, on the one hand, um, it is good to get some constructive criticism. But on the other hand, um, I notice within, some, within your groups, um, people will post up and say, CC welcome, you know, constructive criticism welcome. And I, I cringe when I see those kinds of, of can't comments do because they're opening up them up to such worms, aren't they? Oh, it, and it's just, it's not really a critique, is it? It's really just people's opinions. And a critique isn't opinions. A critique is actionable advice. If I, if you come to me and say, where am I at on this painting? I feel these things about it. You ask me a specific question and I will, to the best of my degree, give you a specific answer that you can take an action on. So yeah. my advice isn't subjectively evaluating your work where I'm like, it is good or it is bad. It's like, Oh, hey, it's this. If you look at my work, it's not, it's good or it's bad. You could be like, oh, I think it looks a little heavy on the line over there. And if you lighten that up a bit, it will carry through the whole. It's advice you can use from your peers. Yeah. It shouldn't ever impact how you feel internally in any way, which is almost 0% of the internet critique. Yeah. Right? Because the internet critique is usually all roses or all poop mountains. It's not yeah. helpful for the most part. And honestly, in my opinion, new students are not helped by critique. Emergent students are helped by critique because they have developed the skills. Yeah. They're working independently and now they need peer guidance to grow in that next way. And so critique's super helpful there. But if you're just trying to figure out how to dry brush, it's not the time for a critique. Yeah. You have so, to be able to take action on all the advice easily for a critique to be of value. Yeah. So what would your advice be? I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm kind of going out on a limb here and, and thinking that maybe there might be somebody that's watching this video that isn't actually going to know who you are and not heard your advice before. What would your advice be in terms of where can you get proper constructive criticism if you feel that that's what's actually needed? How do you know that you need it? At what, at what level? You, do you have need to it? develop a peer group of artists that are in either just past your career point or with you in your career point, people who are your equals or just into the mentorship area where they're maybe a little further along and it needs to be in a organized kind of way. So like if you have a group of friends, artists that you have curated that you know are in a career path that you're in, they're great for a critique. Um, it's nice to join organizations and groups. There's a lot of organizations and groups and they will offer critiques because it's helpful for emergent and mid-emergent artists to talk to their peers, to grow their collections, to you know, learn how to progress their work so they mm -hmm. can get into more galleries, so they can get into more exhibitions, so they can begin to build you know, a collector yeah. list, an exhibition list and you know, do you think it's going to be ever something that you would offer other than within your 18 plus group that you were talking about? Like, so I've seen like I, even in my patrons, like I wanted to get into critiquing in my patronage and I haven't been able to pull it off. And that is because, you know, I, and you all know, I can give a critique, mm -hmm. right? Definitely have critiques in me. I have a lot of actionable art advice I can share, but it's time consuming. Um, and it's a value, like before, if I evaluated somebody's portfolio for admission into a college or to look before a show, I charge for that service yeah. because it's a very involved process. You know, you really have to look at what's, cause you have to take yourself out of the person's collection. You can't put yourself into their collection. If they come to you and they say, this is my collection and this is what I'm trying to do. You have to remove entirely from yourself whatever thoughts you have good or bad to the type of artwork that they're creating so your subjective opinions kind of step aside for a second yeah so you can hear what their personal goals are as an artist and just address those in a fact it's just a lot of work yeah you you're Correct. bound to have then kind of come across people who either um you know it does hurt their feelings when they get criticism or you know, it, you know the, I would imagine that you've probably had a lot of kind of comments around about my mental health. Um, where do you think art fits in with mental health and that kind of, 
you know, th- th- this, th- we, we hear a lot of things like art therapy and... Um, oh, yeah, we do, don't we? But, but what it really is is that, you know, you're kind of a spiritual being having a physical experience, right? So wherever you are in your mental health space, right, if you're at your most healthy or maybe you are not at your most ideal state of mental well-being, um, creative expression is relative, re- relevant to what you're doing. You know, it could be poetry, it could be music, it can be art, it can be writing. But taking time to unpack everything that's happening internally, spiritually, and expressing it out there sometimes is the best work you can do to even start to unravel and see those threads and understand who you are as a being. Mm-hmm. You know, um, uh, I, I have to say, throughout my entire life, I have often been unaware. I thought I was aware, thought I was super present to how I was feeling because I'm a mindful human being, but didn't see it until I looked at the work I was producing during that time. And I was like, Oh, I'm feeling this kind of unexpected way. I, you know, I thought I was feeling strong and resilient, but I'm, you know, I'm feeling very boxed in and attacked and I can see that from these colors and my paintings have gotten deep and they've gotten dark and you know, they have this really intense lighting. <laughs> you know, you start to go, oh. oh speaking yeah. of lighting, as you can see, the light is disappearing from my little window here. So I'm yeah. just going to quickly switch my light on. That's a good idea. Always got to check your lighting. Window lighting is lovely. Yeah, unfortunately, it's it's getting dark outside now. There we go. That's better. I, I can, I'm, I'm visible again. <laughs> Time zones. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, it, it sounds um, like you've, without even really being deliberate about using art as, as, as something that helps you with your mental well-being, it's, it's kind of a given, it's, it's kind of yeah. innate air, it's, it's, it's an innate necessarily forced, would that be yeah. fair to say? Yeah. I, and, and it, but, you know, conversely, on the opposite side of the coin, I'd like to offer caution. Because I see this opposite action too, which is, um, you know, like physical health, mental health has varying states, right? Like sometimes we're in our optimum mental health and sometimes we're in our least optimal mental health. And there are times, as in our physical health, that a little rest, a cup of tea, eating a little bit healthy and getting some sunlight can set us right. But there are times that we have to get extra medical intervention to help us right our ships. And I do see people attempt to address really extreme mental health situations with art alone. And while I think it's like fresh air, like good food, like rest, fantastic for helping us maintain ourselves, it can't necessarily pull us out of everything. I have a lot of files in my group for when art is not enough. And we talk about art helps with this, but cannot help with this. Yeah. You know, Just like sunlight's great, but you know, if you have a major medical event and you need surgery, yeah, you might want to get sunlight and some surgery. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and and I'm I'm so glad I'm so glad you brought that up because as a professional mental health nurse myself, um, you know, I'm very much an an advocate for people living life and and using art as a way of, of all sorts of things to um, sort of maintain their, their, their mental well-being uh, and to help with their mental well-being, to help with their mood, et cetera, et cetera. However, there does come a point where something else is required, uh, mm-hmm. and whether that be um, other therapy or medication and, and seeking professional help, then, um, yeah, that's, that's definitely um, something that I would advocate for sure. Yeah, and, I, and I'm sure you've seen that uh, one of the things I see is people will go through a tremendous loss. Right? Mm-hmm. They've lost a primary family member, which is huge, and they're sad. And I, I, I know in the United States, it seems like sometimes people are really almost terrified of being sad, mm-hmm. being in mourning, being in a, in a dark place. They're, they're, they're afraid of that experience. And, yeah. um, and sometimes it's really appropriate to be sad. It's necessary to be sad. Yeah, it's absolutely. how you process. And they will in that state, not be able to be very creative and be upset about, I feel like I should be able to paint and paint this out. And some people can, for some people, that's an appropriate action. But really for a lot of people, it's supernatural and normal 
to go through stress and not feel creative. It's supernatural to go through um, emotional distress, right? Yeah. Like where you, you have a loss, a profound loss. Yeah. And not be creative. Health scares can take you out of that. It's and, and I think I see people, they'll look over and they'll see another person maybe coping with those, you know, seminal monumental life moments with art and think, but I'm not able to paint and therefore I won't get better forgetting that we're all really different human beings. Yeah. And like sometimes um, if, if, if I'm upset enough, I may not be creative. Yeah. I'm, I may need to do a, a different thing to return to my health space and, and realizing that those expectations, those, there's a lot of arbitrary expectations people put on themselves around art that they kind of pull out of the ether and they go, art should this and art should not this and art is this to me and art is not this mm -hmm. to me. And it's not really based on more than an abstracted feeling. Yeah. So if I'm, if I'm hearing you correctly, then it sounds like that um, it's about allowing art to be rather than forcing it to be something. So it's that those expectations of art, those expectations, uh, expectations of us, and, mm -hmm. and to, to just allow it to happen. So allow the art, allow our feelings, um, and where necessary, ask for outside help. Would that be well, fair to? Is that, that kind of something? That's why in the show, I always, I always end the show, be good to yourself, be good to each other. But under that umbrella, be good to yourself. And we talk about a lot. You got to be forgiving of yourself. You have to be forgiving of your humanity. You have to be forgiving of where you're at. You have to be forgiving of your painting for not living up to your weird sense of perfection that you probably put out there when you started the painting. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it interesting how we have these ideas of what we want to get down on paper? And, and even you and I have probably experienced it where we're oh, like, oh, that's so not what I was expecting it to look like. I'm happy with it, but that's not what I wanted. But right, sometimes, yeah. sometimes it's, I'm not happy with it. I've just right. recently done something that I wasn't that happy with. Um, and it, it happens all the time, doesn't it? But whereas other people are not seeing that necessarily. Um, no, they, they assume like professional people, everything they do is just golden and perfect. And they don't imagine they see curated collections that have been sorted through and edited greatly before it hits, you know, it, 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 and at some point, I think that, I think the disconnect is somebody becomes famous and we'll use just a big famous name. We'll say Picasso, whether that's your cup of tea or not cup of tea, yeah. becomes famous is considered a master. So then they drug through everything this poor guy ever did, every sketch, every doodle, everything. And because these sets of paintings are worth millions of dollars and therefore now there's a financial machine, right? Yeah. Um, around all of the product. But when he was doing the work, he wasn't necessarily throwing every napkin at everybody. You know, there's curation. I, for sure, he had, he wouldn't have been driven to do the work that he did if he didn't look at some of the work and go, not this. This is not where I'm at now. I need to do this. And I think every artist has that. But when we see them, when we become globally aware of them, they're in this weird sort of pantheon of almost kind of demagogues of creativity that we abstract into some new space and say therefore every brush mark they must have loved yeah but any any foundational working artist is like yeah for sure not every painting was their favorite <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah the the pain is real <laughs> <laughs> for everybody there is a you know uh my favorite uh artist in the world living today is in your neck of the woods okay my favorite, 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 like that I personally look up to and say to myself, I will make art my whole life and never make anything as cool as this. Right? Because mm -hmm. we all have one. We all have some artists that we go, no matter how hard I work <laughs> or strive, nothing I can do will ever be as amazing as this because they speak to something in our souls yeah. that, that resonates that deeply. And he does. That's Andy Goldsworthy. Mm -hmm. And he does work in time and natural material. Okay. So it's very ephemeral, um, but it's fantastic. You don't need an art degree at all to understand it. That's what I, one of the things I love about him. He does this very high level of art, but you don't need any, nobody needs to indoctrinate you into the thinking process to understand that this is amazing. Yeah. And, you know, he's done some documentaries and I highly recommend watching it because you'll see him be dissatisfied. You'll see him have 
one of his great collections that he worked on a very long time was just sort of arbitrarily destroyed by a, a company that was cleaning up Deadwood. <laughs> yeah. That's their job. I guess you guys have company, you know, government groups that come through and clean up some Deadwood along the road for safety. Yep. As you would, you know, fire safety and all that. And he's in the middle of an art installation and boom, it's gone. The next five years of this creation is gone. And, you know, it's a... Uh, it's wonderful to see somebody that I, you know, admire and hold up there as really being in the slipstream of creativity in, in yeah. the core creation of the universe going. <laughs> <laughs> so now, do you and think everything he does, is he like, does he think it's the greatest thing he ever did? Yeah. So, so do you think then that um, our thought process and who we are as a person, how we value ourselves and our art, has just as much value, if not more, than actually learning the techniques. And yeah, the I think the end result of the painting is irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing that happens when a bunch of other much more important stuff happens along the way, and then the result of all those little minor miracles going along yeah. is the painting. And then I think it's a tremendous shame to have to look at the painting and say, the journey had value or not based on the result instead of just saying, you know, I connected parts of myself that were not previously connected. Yeah. During this painting and, and a new window opened up to me. And now it, because we look at the end painting and we go is good or bad. It's just really, <laughs> <laughs> so do you think we could do better then at learning how to, to fully embrace what you've just talked about, being able to actually enjoy the process to, um, and then to take away whatever we need to take away from that. It's, it's a, a bit like those sayings, you know, where you get the quotes where, you know, people come into our reasons, our lives for yeah. a reason. So our paintings come into being for a reason. A reason, a season or a time. Yes. Well, let's look at that. Let's unpack that. I like that. So we paint for a reason. We're in an emotional space. We're in an experience that we have to do. And we do this for a season because a particular amount of time it takes us to work through that. And some work is over time because there's an overarching narrative that we exist within that our artwork will constantly speak back to. Yeah. Maybe that's what we're talking about when we talk about style. Because that's, that's, that's probably one of the most asked questions isn't it is how do I find my style you are your style it's about finding yourself it's an e pray love yeah. situation and doesn't, doesn't know, style I'm find you essentially right but to 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 distill that down and take away the noise of everyone else's uh projection of you because that's what you're doing when you find your artistic style is you're stripping away the projection of the whole world that you have uh aware of or unaware of being subjected to and getting down to the purity of who you are and how you would say things. So a lot of times when people say talent, I really think of it's, it's a combination of skill, determination, um, perseverance, uh, you know, self education, refinement, refinement in a person's life story, like who they are, the experiences they've been through. And then when all those things come together in a beautiful moment, we get something that looks like a unique style and then we can go, Oh, well, that's Lisa Frank or that's Andy Goldsworthy or, you know, uh, let's see who else do we love Francis Bacon or you just go through any of the artists and you go, yeah, they have very unique, distinctive styles, uh, Bosch, like a Bosch crazy. Don't Google that without safe search on Bosch, not safe for work. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do want to see it, he's definitely got a very unique perspective on literally the universe. But that's what it is, right? Like when we when we start to become truly ourselves, and I think that's why I like the daily painting that we do in Acrylic April, because again, you get so tired. Yeah. From fighting yourself. You will just fight yourself at first, the, the whole way through, and then somewhere in the middle of it, you're like, I can't do this anymore. And you relax into... Yeah. You finding your way through the painting and then through that kind of fatigue moment starts, you can dampen the noise enough to start to see yourself and then create style. I think. Yeah. I, feel. I, I know I have to, I have to hold up my hands and confess. Um, I, epic fail. 
Um, I only got so far into it and then I just, I, I, I fell off the wagon. But I forgave myself for that. Um, yeah, you know, it's kind of it's, like, a, you know, <laughs> it's not heart surgery. Like you can epic fail a heart surgery. Right? <laughs> you know, you, know, you can epic fail a off. rocket launch. <laughs> 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 you can really blow that, um, carrying nitroglycerin. You can, you know, there's, there's some things that have real, I think we have goals that we set for ourselves and those are nice. Yeah. And there are times, reason, time, season, there are times we can achieve those goals and then our life happens. That's well, we have a huge amount of how to do a daily painting. I have a whole segment on, and then your kid got sick or your job accelerated and you don't yeah. have any free time or you know, yeah. whatever's going on in your life, you're gonna, you're gonna get derailed in life. It's sort of about saying, and you're creative all the time, right? There's, there's, there's the challenges that we, we see Inktober, or I think I've seen one going around, 100 Faces is going around right now. Yes, yes. Um, I've just seen know. one um, on an, another, um, uh, an oil, somebody who does oil painting, and um, I think Slew, I think it was, um, he had done, um, six self-portraits in six days so each day he did a self-portrait and he did it onto the same canvas and oh it wow was, it was it was really and I was like oh yeah I'm going to see if I can try and find some time to do that and right. I haven't yet and I probably if I'm totally honest I probably won't um at this immediate moment in, in time because I'm actually I'd, I'd like to give acrylic April another go and and and, and and look at um you know doing daily painting and and some of that is, is that, um, again, you know, full of confessions today, I'm, I really do get caught up in that it needs to be a good painting. And I mm -hmm. need to stop doing that. I really yeah. need to just let go and, and just, and, you know, I'm, I don't consider myself to be a bad artist. I'm not a bad artist. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm, creat I'm creative and I've got a shed load of other different creative things that I do. Um, that's, that's not just painting, you know, sewing and, and, um, crocheting and all sorts of, um, wonderful stuff and sewing. Um, uh, so speaking of which, is there anything other than painting that you do that is creative? Like, yes, yeah, perhaps like a lot of things, but I'm not right now currently. Cause I'm so the momentum of, of the art Sherpa thing has become so big that that's just like a wave. I just surf now. But before that, when I was just a regular artist in my regular studio doing regular stuff, answering to nobody but me, yeah, <laughs> like in the world, um, I was very into sugar craft and I quilted, I did garmentry, I did period reproductions, I did illumination, I mean, just uh, sculpture, photography, just as many creative expressions as you could think of. Uh, there was a about three years that I got deep into the world of female clay. I can cane anything. Um, just, I think like a lot of artists, like we're, we're going along and you're like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to paint all these jackets. <laughs> <You're just laughs> painting denim for a while going, well, that was fantastic. Uh, you know, I'm going to quilt all the things. There's uh, I've made little Bernina and we certainly had our luggage and traveled around and did mm -hmm. all that stuff. I did art dolls for a period of time. Isn't it interesting, though, how um, when you're artistic or creative, um, whatever, you know, flavor of the month, it, it, the word it is, um, that it's not just one thing that you are necessarily good at. You, you, you dip your toes into so many different things. And I, I often I've often said jokily, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a jack of all trades, but a master of none. But that's not strictly true, is it, really? Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I wonder, you know, should we be doing more to kind of help our viewers to, to kind of come to that same realization? Not necessarily I, telling I, them, but helping them to come to it by themselves. I don't know. Like in my space, um, I, have a very, I have a very clear mission directive. So I look at my goals are um, first to help people overcome their disbelief that they can be creative. Yeah. Second to enable them. I don't teach people to paint like me in my style. I try to just teach them how to paint. I try to teach them as many techniques and processes and concepts and ideas and introduce them to as much art thought around acrylic specifically as I can. Yeah. 
And then my goal is to help them hear themselves and become themselves and move on. Um, I do tend to get a little preachy about studio safety because I think the internet has made um, some wonderful progress in helping people have access to a lot of different creative ideas, but it's allowed a lot of people to gain a voice yeah. um, and garner a lot of credibility when they have not done any training. And so the end result of that isn't, it's not bad that somebody untrained is out there being successful. That's, that's fine. That's good. Cause training is not important except when it comes to giving advice that's life-threatening. And so I, I do tend to get a little preachy if, you know, uh, somebody's using torches on acrylic paint because that could yeah. create tremendous health of issues, course. like really catastrophic health issues. Or if they're pulling glass out of a frame, slapping a little cardboard on the back of it, taping the edges and going, look, it's a DIY palette. Well, that's great unless that particular crystalline structure was unstable and cardboard or not, it pops and the glass shatters and you don't have safety glasses on and you're the, you know, and it's not stuff that you would think of except in, unless you had a lot of experience in, in those areas and you know, Hey, don't eat paint. Don't finger paint without gloves because you don't know how you're going to react to the yeah particles, the safety stuff. I get preachy around the safety, not to limit anybody else out there. I do think teachers are responsible for being aware if what they're saying to their students is safe or not and to make an effort yeah. to be current and up on, a little something in my eye here, up on what it is. So like I always tell my students about cadmium, right? There's safety concerns around cadmium and they're not massive, but people should know that there is, they should understand prop 65, what that actually means yeah. and what to be worried about when not to think about um, ventilation is a big thing. Don't varnish indoors. Oh my goodness, please. I, I, and then I cannot tell you how many people come back and well, I saw a street painter and they had a spray can and they were using fire. I'm like, yeah, but th this is an artist who's under pressure to perform in a particular kind of way. And we haven't done long-term studies we know that heating acrylic paint is toxic. We know it's super exposed particles. We know it yeah. makes those particles lighter in the air and they get in your lungs. And we know that that's terrible, but nobody's grabbed all of the street painters and then looked at how that's impacted their health. Yeah. Right. We, we know that pouring acrylic paint down the drains can be rough on your drains because <laughs> it sticks to everything. Right. But there's, there is a responsibility, I think, if you if you put yourself out as an instructor, and, and you're an instructor, and I know you do this around mental health issues, where you're very responsible about mental health issues because you understand yeah. that a little can do a lot of harm. Um, I think that uh, I am frustrated sometimes with my uh, fellow influencers and bloggers and stuff because, not globally, but I do see a lot of people who are much more concerned with the clicks. Yeah. And the self-gratification, then stopping and saying, is this a responsible top 10 tip? Is this tip, while viral and interesting and exciting, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. is this a tip that's going to maybe expose, you know, somebody to something that they shouldn't be exposed to and I should have maybe looked up a yeah. little bit? Yeah. 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 So obviously that's my, that's my soapbox. So I do consider myself, um, <laughs> Shall I give, give, give you a hand to come down from that soapbox? Oh, no, man, I'm going to <laughs> really stay up here because I, I like, it started out with Mod Podge where people yeah. were like, you can varnish with Mod Podge and that's not harmful. That's not like, no one's going to be harmed from anything they do. Well, I suppose you could probably find something you can do with Mod Podge that will harm you. I don't know what that is. Please don't find that limit. But for the most part, it's a fairly safe yeah. product, right? Um, but they were, would use it incorrectly. Yeah. And so, you know, you start educating there. But when people's life is at risk, when their kid's yeah. life is at risk, when their pet's life is at risk, and safety is involved and injuries involved, yeah, I get a little intense. And I do consider that that's definitely something that I am responsible to do my best to educate around. And I do get a yeah. little crazy in my community about that. And my honest hope is that I inform those thousand people. And then as those thousand people watch other things or read other things, yeah, 
they're inspired then to say to another mom, oh, hey, pouring paint, super cool. Skip the torch. It doesn't do anything except possibly expose you to at least formaldehyde levels that you wouldn't want and potentially yeah. tons of other stuff with you and your kid. Don't do it. I hope that. I kind of hope to, I sort of <laughs> hope to virally create an information set just for people's safety. Yeah. And it's, it's one thing that I've noticed about you when, when, when you've got something important you, you, to say, you're very passionate, you're a very compassionate person. I, 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 I can't say it enough just how much I have um, enjoyed and, and loved being a part of um, the Art Sherpa team. Um, because, you know, although I haven't done anything lately, I'm, I am still part of the Art Sherpa design team. You are um, part of the Art Sherpa design team. <laughs> And you know, um, we're it's, very relaxed design team. It's sort of like <laughs> if you get some stuff done, that's cool. <laughs> but you know, I've I've always always loved your videos and and the the um, the 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 actual in the, your environment and and how um, uh, your your personality just shines through and and your your authenticity, um, you know knowing what you're like off camera and knowing what you're like on camera, you know, yes, there are differences, but nothing that I would say that you were completely false on camera. Do you know what I mean? I think I have less makeup off camera. I'm more likely to have a crazy hair day. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and, and there's probably, I'm, I'm, I filter my language a bit for online. Yeah. I probably am a little, uh, a little more salty in my language organically. <laughs> I mean, but, you know, that, that's your kind of sort of norms. We all have our different hats. Um, but I can see that you're definitely authentic when, when, you're, when you're doing your videos. Um, okay. And the, the rapport that you and John have um, on your videos, you know, everybody, they don't just love you, they love John as well. So big shout out to Stunt Hands. <laughs> what was that? We talked this whole time without mentioning John. I have a co-host, John. He's awesome. <laughs> he runs the whole show. Could not do it without him. <laughs> He's amazing. He is amazing. Uh, Huge I shout out much, and much love to John. Well, I think that's important uh -huh. to know, like looking at my, um, if, if you're a YouTuber watching your show, right, is I don't, I'm not doing this alone. I have a co-captain and it is two hands on deck and it does allow us to do a lot more work and get a lot more done than trying to do this alone. If you're out here on YouTube trying to do this alone, yeah, like you are this thing, <laughs> it is uh, monumentally difficult work sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I would, I would agree with that. And of Ooh. course, as much as I would absolutely love to um, just keep, cause this is, this is a really good conversation. I mean, we have unpicked some really important information in this conversation. Um, and I think that's pretty awesome. Feel free to edit it down as much as needed. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything, what, what's next for the, let's, let's, let's ask you this one last question and we'll wind things up. What's next for the Art Sherpa and Stunt Hands and John? So the next thing will be um, the books. This is not the this is not the last book. It's the first of many books. And moving into you know uh, more art materials. Like I have the soap for acrylic paint. Moving into art more art materials and making things that I feel make beginning artist life easier. Not just cheaper. Because cheap is cool, but not cool if it's not easier. No. So trying to move into those things and doing more, like we've got the retreat, doing probably more retreats and more appearances. Mostly just more work, girl. It's about, an, I have another thousand paintings to do. We've done a thousand. I've got another thousand more. Just going to do that until I exit the planet. <laughs> do you ever run out of ideas? How do you manage to keep your ideas going? I have no idea. Actually, I do. Um, I... I think that the only thing that stifles ideas is um, uh, when you're not compassionate to yourself and you're really brutal internally or external brutality towards you. I think that can really slow down creativity. But I think if you're in a safe space and you're mm -hmm. being creative, creativity is like a Katamari Damasai, if you remember that game. 
it just rolls downhill and more little creativity sticks to it, sticks to it, the ball gets bigger, bigger, bigger until it's this giant ball just rolling through the universe. I mean, ideas are as big as the universe, right? Yeah, yeah. So we never run, we never run out of ideas. I think it's fear, isn't it? It's that um, we have an idea but think we can't do it because we can't do it. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. Or we just, you know, we just stop trusting our instincts, you know, or we saying guessers like, I, I don't know, I'm painting a lot of pigs, you know, I could I bet I'm painting new pigs every time I paint the pigs. I, and I don't want to be like, hey, I'm never going to paint on another pig or I'm doing a lot of gnomes or whatever I've got going on or um, or somebody else ever painted that. So there's certainly that thinking that, you know, every, everything doesn't have to be completely re reinventing the wheel every time. Sometimes you can just contribute your conversation to a thought that's like, obviously faces have been painted. Yeah. Right. But you paint your own faces. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's that sort of idea. I think we like our arbitrary sense of what is art. We arbitrarily decide what is creative. Yeah. I mean, yes, respect copyright. Don't steal people's photographs and art. That's just why. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> but, you know, um, if you, you know, I don't, if I paint a wave, I don't assume no one else will ever paint a wave. I just ask them not to paint my exact wave and then pretend it was yeah. their wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. right that kind of a thing like if it, you know if you love mary engelbright that's cool just don't paint exactly that thing but you could be inspired by what she yeah, said and yeah. your own thing in that area and find that's it. a whole different video isn't it the whole copyright thing but i think i think you've you have you not yeah, done no, videos no, we can't on touch that. that we're gonna leave that alone i'm gonna let you deal with that in the comments or any yeah else. Yeah, if you have any que if you have any questions at all about copyright or anything that we've been discussing today, please leave uh, a question down below. <laughs> Could you answer your questions? You yeah, know, Tanya's really great. She answers all her questions. She has a wealth of information. Um, I'm going to say to you, even if you're shy, even if you don't normally ask a question, definitely give a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe and put that question down there below because this is what you love to do. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Did you notice how I managed to sneak in two last questions? Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, I'm, I'm sneaky that way. I'm, I'm getting right. the most out of you, definitely. But thank <laughs> you so very much. And um, everybody, remember, um, don't forget to look after your mental well-being because only you can. I hope you've enjoyed this. Hit the like button. Do what needs to be done. Thank you for joining us. And thank you, Cinnamon. I really, really do appreciate your time. I know you're a very busy lady today. Shall I, shall I get McDuff in to say hello and goodbye? Oh, we need McDuff. Oh, we need McDuff. Let's treat, 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 if you didn't it know, is, if it's it is. this is McDuff. Oh, McDuff, I see you. <laughs> he's very, I get to see him all the time, but he's gorgeous. <laughs> give, a, give a like just for McDuff. <laughs> yeah, everybody shout out McDuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank you so up. much for having me, sweet. I just appreciate it. and You're just the best. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, let's see, I'm getting all embarrassed now. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much. Bye, everybody. See you in the next video. Bye. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bye. <laughs>